Got to start off by saying the first IMAX film I ever saw was at the Houston Museum of Natural Science, and it was Everest ah, in 1998. No yeah. And so I just love your films. Uh, after you. Natural Parks came out, I actually really got into camping and hiking, and uh, really got me into all that. So thank you for that film. And then we actually covered the movie Spare Parts. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, I guess that was last year. And so when I saw that in the film, I was like, wow, I already know this story. So that was really cool. So children today are facing, are going to be facing very complex uh, challenges coming up, especially with overpopulation, um, uh, like greenhouse issues that we're having, and then even us becoming an interplanetary species. Is that what attracted you to making this film? That's one of the things. Um, the challenges of the future, you said population explosion, is, is true, and engineers are the ones that are going to solve those problems. How do nine billion people live on one planet, particularly if they're pushed together more and more by moving towards cities? So how do cities function in a meaningful way? How do you get through the LA traffic without it taking you three hours? We'll, we'll have to solve those problems by engineering better. And, and that's what the movie is about, the future. Because the future is all about engineering. How do we make technologies like renewable energy not only more accessible to Americans, but how do we get past the political stigma that we have with renewables? I think that's something that's really what's uh, big, one of the biggest challenges, right? Um, just trying to trying to fi find uh, improvements ways to improve the technology so that it's it's something that can work um, with the grid to, to uh, divest from um, fossil fuels but at the same time you know policy has to come in to be able to push those those that implementation forward um, and so you know at St when I was at Stanford I actually did work on a project to be able to create a plan for each state in the US to go hundred percent renewables which is something doable and and um, you know trying to highlight the different areas where we need to um, innovate and, and are still lacking in the technology um, and so that's part of you know the film as well and in, in, in trying to find um, inspire the next generation to be able to go into engineering to solve those problems, right? Uh, in the film, you cover some of the ancient um, builds that we've had, like the Great Wall. What building techniques have we learned from the ancients that we are applying now today? Oh, well, cements have gotten yeah. far better since the Great Wall was built. Um, you know, it, we one of the cool story points that we do in the Great yeah. Wall sequence in our film is that the Chinese invented a new way to build cement with, with sticky rice. So something that they had on their dinner plate turned out to be a better solution to building uh, cement that would stand the test of time and expand and contract with, with temperature changes. Today, we have cement that is a thousand times better than what the Chinese used a thousand years ago. It's gotten better and better and better through science, through all of the various tests that people have done, through using all kinds of other substances in cement. And today, you can build something like the Bird Nest Stadium that Steve Burroughs built in, in China, where they held the Olympics, where these big pillars are like coming across and they're standing without any support beneath them. Mm -hmm. Amazing amazing technology and you end up having solutions like that that are creative solutions that um, are so much fun to come up with. I mean Steve Burroughs is a great character. How do we prepare the children uh, or the youth of today for the challenges that we have coming up? Well I think education is really the key. You know you end up in our film showing how kids are educated and then inspired by particularly strong teachers, teachers that can, can be a mentor and push kids towards their, their desires, push, push them into areas that they seem really good at and that they'll love doing all the rest of their lives. So don't forget, if you love what you do, you never work a day of your life. As an engineer, do you think the, the kids should be more of a specialist or should they be more adaptive? I think definitely being open to to doing different things, right? Like being adaptive is 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 um, definitely key because the challenges are always going to be changing, right? And so um, 
obviously you're gonna learn, you know, your your uh, basic skills, but above everything, like most important is just creativity, because that's what will help you find a solution, right? And and the more that we have kids have uh, be exposed to different programs at their schools and and having something that is hands on that makes it relatable, I think that's you know that's that's kind of pushing forward and in, in, in getting them to think a little bit more critically and and creatively um, and and coming up with different designs to prepare them for the for the future and finally what would you like the audience to take away after seeing this film I think the key thing is that our film presents a new perspective on engineering it will show the audience what an engineer does day after day and it's not much sitting behind a computer most of it's out in the field working with teams creating as you go and coming up with solutions that are imaginative and and, and 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 wonderfully creative. And so it's fun. Engineering is really a fun profession. And, and so we're trying to make kids not, don't become a lawyer, become an engineer.